Like if I, I can't count on my hand, the number of times I have felt people be triggered by me because they think I'm lazy or that life is just easy for me. If you are a projector or even a manifester or reflector, any non-sacrally defined type in human design, chances are at some point, and maybe even often, you felt like, am I lazy? Is there something wrong with me that I don't have as much energy as the people around me? And this is a very common experience before you understand your human design that there can be this conditioned feeling like you should be doing more or capable of doing more or having more energy than you naturally do. Once you understand this about yourself, this can actually become a superpower and a really inspiring aspect of your design. But without understanding it, it can also lead to the common experience of burnout. So my dear, you are not lazy. And in today's video, we're gonna hear from some amazing projectors about how they have grown to understand their non-sacral definition and how to work with it so that they avoid burnout. This video is specifically created for projectors. However, I could not help but notice how relevant these interview clips are for manifestors and reflectors as well. Oh, hey there, projector. Welcome to the Projector Playlist, where we are exploring every important keynote of what it means to be a projector. And if we haven't met, I'm Karen, the Human Design Channel. So let's get into today's video. Welcome. When we're living from the not self in a really strong way, obviously that contributes to burnout, right? Like for me, I was trying to work like a generator MG um, and work out like one and had underlying like sort of uh, context that was gonna already set me up for like more stress in the stress bucket. So it just all, it all blew up. But also when I zoom out and like, I think about human design in the broader context of like, you get what you get, right? Like a lot of the times what unfolds in our life is choiceless. Burnout is usually a pivot point. Like you didn't do anything wrong because you burnt out. You were exploring something there. Like your soul was exploring something there. In my experience, almost every projector that I've ever met has had some kind of burnout in their life. And this is because having the undefined sacral center means that there is no inbuilt mechanism for knowing when you've had enough. When is enough enough? The generator has a defined sacral center, so they have this specific amount of fuel that they have available for doing things that they resonate with. And so they're just gonna go and go until they don't have any energy and they know when enough is enough because they're just done. Versus those with the undefined sacral will take in and amplify the sacral energy of those around them and they'll kind of go and go and go and they don't get that same indication that they've had enough because what they're experiencing is an amplification of the sacral energy of those around them. And this is based on that basic mechanic in human design that undefined centers take in and amplify the energy of the defined centers around them. And since 70% of the planet have the generator aura or the defined sacral center, you know, the moment you leave your house um, or even probably in your house, you have generators there that you are taking in and amplifying their energy. So in essence, it can be really hard for the projector or the non-sacral types to discern when they've actually reached their energetic limit and when they don't have fuel and they need to recharge. Being a non-sacral, the biggest thing at the beginning of, I used to be a teacher. So when I was a teacher, that non-sacral energy, I was like, always like, why can't I keep up? Like, why don't I have the energy? Why am I exhausted? Why am I having issues or health issues or whatever, right? It was this constant burnout of trying to be it. And when I really took it in and understood what success meant for me, which was freedom, it like alleviated all of that stress and pressure to be like, wait a second. I'm not meant to go that fast. So of course my desires in life aren't meant to be filled up, right? It's meant to be spacious. 
So that non-sacral being, it's like the acceptance of, again, freedom. I'm going to work how I want to work. I'm going to work how many hours I want to work. I'm going to have success from that. But I don't need to go above and beyond. And almost that acceptance too, because a lot of peers go do more and work more and make more. And it's still that like holding that integrity where like, I can't, I could but I don't want to have the end result of that. It's not worth it for me. Right. So it's holding that trust factor in anyone's design, really that your design is your design. And it's just not going to benefit you if you go outside of that. So I've had to pull back on my sacral a lot. Um, I've also had to add in a lot to my life to be like, as my life got busier and bigger and all of the things that like, I can't do it all. Right. And it's acceptance of that. We're like, I need help here. I need help here. I need help here because I don't want to be that version of myself. I find undefined sacral is you're going to go into that bitterness, that non, um, non alignment theme, and you're going to experience all of those emotions. So again, it's a choice that success or the bitterness operate out of your sacral or don't, but you have to have the support in there to alleviate what does need to get done. I absolutely love what Amy Elizabeth is saying here because what she's basically saying is that she's turned the limits of her design and what her body can do into a superpower where she's learned to to create a lifestyle where she can work in a minimal way that she doesn't expand her business beyond her capacity but at the same time she delegates and she gets that support that she needs in order to create the results that she wants without her having to be the doer. It's super empowering. That means that sometimes my days energetically look like 18 hours of design work, but that's what I'm doing for three months worth of content. I try to only schedule, um, you know, one or two meetings a day. I also look at my cycles and think about where I am in my hormonal cycles. And I know I'm going to have less energy when I'm menstruating and more energy when I'm ovulating and how do I align with those things? So I don't think it's so much about what is the projector prescription for how to manage my energy, but letting yourself experiment and find your edges and then tapering back and forgiving yourself when you push that boundary or push that edge because you're always going to push it a little bit. Right. But also something to know that I've really noticed that's been super helpful is different invitations, different people give me different levels of energy. If I'm in relationship with a manifester, my energy is going to feel very different than if I'm in relationship and in a project with a projector, things are going to move a lot slower than they do with a manifester. But sometimes I'm with a projector and things can move super fast. If I'm with a generator, it's usually more of a steady growth period over time. So getting to know the other auras and how they naturally operate energetically also helps me get a better understanding of how is that invitation, like how am I going to show up in the presence of that invitation or that connection, because I know I'm naturally sort of taking on and trying on their energy for size. When it comes to avoiding burnout, I just have to test my edges. I've been burnt out. Um, and I know what it feels like when I'm approaching that period of feeling spent like mini burnouts. And then I just reset. So also allowing myself to take a day off, even if it's a Tuesday, even if it's a Thursday, like not worrying about, I have to work Monday through Friday, take the weekends off. I just have crafted my life in such a way where if I've gone really hard for two days straight, I can take the next day off. And it's not about, well, it's a weekday, so I have to work. It's just for me about waking up and asking myself, do I, do I have it in me today to do this? And sometimes the answer is no. And if I give myself the breathing room, even if it's just half a day or canceling one thing, typically that does exactly what I need to just reset and move right along and forgive myself for it. So forgiveness is a huge thing because we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves to show up at a certain cadence in a certain way, having certain responsibilities And I think that just creates a setup for bitterness as well, because if you 
overstuff your calendar with all these things you think you can do. And then you can't show up for them. You're not going to feel really great about yourself. So being honest with yourself about what you truly can show up for and knowing that I want to be at my best for anything that I commit to. So if that means saying no to something or saying no one day or going, you know what? I really wanted to do this thing, but I just don't feel like I would be in my integrity and in my, in alignment today, then I have to be willing to take responsibility for the disappointment that someone might feel for like maybe letting them down for saying, no, I I said I was going to do this thing, but I just, it doesn't feel aligned for me anymore. Um, and you have to be willing to take responsibility for honoring your energy in the face of possibly disappointing someone or saying no to something that you had originally said yes to. So that's a huge one for me that I'm learning right now. I love what Alex Cantone is saying here that learning to experiment with that edge of you're doing and then notice when you kind of overdone it and then draw back that this is just a natural part of the experimentation and seeing how your energy really works. I've learned that I can get tired if I am around people a lot, I get tired and I need to replenish my energy. The other day I was with my parents and I was kind of, you know, catering to them and I needed to drive them here, drive them there, do this and that. And all of a sudden when I finally, they left, like I sort of, I got them an Uber at the end of everything that we were doing basically at the end of the day, they left and all of a sudden I felt so drained. And I realized that in that moment I had to honor my feeling and thankfully I was at home, but I just felt like I could not do anything else. I just needed to lie down and close my eyes. So in that moment, I think there's been so many times in my life where I overcome that feeling, but the more we do that, the more exhausted I think we become. So in that moment I honored it and I was fine for you know, I laid down for 30 minutes. I mean, thankfully, again, like I was home, I had the uh, ability to do that. When I don't, I take like two or three minutes just to breathe, to kind of replenish the oxygen and to make sure that I just connect with myself. But I find that there's days when I do less because that's just how I feel. I've pushed myself for a big part of my life, uh, working two jobs, raising kids, being a single mom, and it's a lot. I find that after 40, it really hits us physically that if I would not honor how I'm feeling and I wouldn't rest enough, I would definitely either feel burnt out or feel sick, fall sick, lose my voice, have fever, get a flu, uh, get something. So when we're able to shift those little things in our behavior and how we treat ourselves physically and rest more and honor how we feel, how our body feels and be in our own aura. Because sometimes we can just be in the presence of others for too long and just that can be very, very draining. So having the time alone. So for me, it's also um, having two dogs. I, I take them for a walk and I can just, you know, replenish my energy that way. I'm in, by myself with them and it's so, so fulfilling and, and just, amazing. So anything that you can do to ensure that you're taking care of yourself physically is is very, very important. As we're seeing, a lot of our projectors here are sharing that they, part of their process has been to learn to discern when they do need to recharge and then to prioritize taking that time and to do it in the way that feels good for them. So now there's this opportunity to, you know, if you're here watching this video, look at your burnout, look at your design, and then see what's being asked of you right now is it I need to learn how to nap like I literally didn't know how to nap until I was in my 30s <laughs> I was like couldn't do it I was like too strung out couldn't relax couldn't fall asleep and then I got to the point where I had to right um so whatever that is for you um I actually I have a, a like a free guide thing too if people want to to look at and it there's just like some key tips by type because you know if you're not living your design you're pushing from somewhere, right? And that's a limited resource, so. I love what Victoria Ryan is saying here about how you will be pushing from somewhere if you're living from your not self. And I can definitely see that as true. And I think the way that we tend to push is really unique 
to each of us and this is, this is something that we can learn about ourselves as we are in the deconditioning process. But what she's highlighting here is that ultimately burnout is an indicator that you are off course, that the way that you are attempting to go about things is unsustainable and that you have to deny your body its truth in order to proceed the way that you have been and that you know a course correction is in order. I always remember this quote, non-sacrals are here to become wise about work and family or work and parenting. So I have kept that quote with me over the last decade. And I, I remind myself all the time, you can't look to how people have done it. You're creating or remembering a way that's so unique to you. That's, that's not going to come from what, mo how most of the population is functioning. And, and with that means like if I, I can't count on my hand the number of times I have felt people be triggered by me because they think I'm lazy or that life is just easy for me or must just think I'm better. Like a huge projection field comes with when you decide to step into, I'm going to live the way I'm designed to. Um, and I'll say on the other side of that, there comes a huge resonance field. There comes all of these non-sacrals who look at you and are like, oh my God, that's possible. And, and like get lit up in a good way around, it's like their ceiling of reality gets blown off and they realize there's like other levels they could be playing at. So that's the first thing I would say about like, there is such a sweetness and exhilaration in the simultaneous innovation of and remembrance of how we can function in a way that is like life-giving, um, enriching, in a way that benefits the self, but also benefits the whole. And I, I, I think that's all types. I think all types can forge that when they're in their design and they're committed to whatever their path is. I think Pilar here is just showing the potential, the inspiration that's possible when you really truly align with the limits of your design and also then allow yourself to flourish as you and create a whole new template for how to live on this planet. I think this is inspiring not only for non-sacral types but even sacral types as well. It's, it's creating a whole new way of being. So whether you are a projector, a manifester, or a reflector, coming back to your your type's strategy and your decision-making authority and experimenting with that is going to really help you to avoid burnout and, and to make that, you know, a completely optional experience versus what most people experience is as an inevitability but it really doesn't have to be that way. If you are a projector, you may wanna check out the projector playlist. I'll link it there. And also I made a whole playlist about burnout. If you happen to be experiencing burnout, uh, this is something I'm really good at is helping people to align with a sustainable way of living according to who they are. So I'll put the link here to my freedom lifestyle design process, which is my unique way of approaching how to manage your time and design a lifestyle that's going to really suit who you really are. Speaking of which, I'm at this most incredible place. I'll just show you the sunset that's happening right now. Thanks for being here with me. And I'll see you again soon here on my channel. Bye.